wanted to take this occasion, brothers and sisters, this Sunday to preach on this second reading. It's very beautiful. In the first reading and in the gospel, we hear about an obedience to God of changing our hearts, really doing what God is asking of us to go from doing one thing, maybe our own will, to doing God's will. And we see in this letter to the Philippians that we heard, one of the things that God wills is the unity of his believers. Every Sunday we confess it. We say we believe in one Catholic Church, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we know that God's will is not that we be divided up into different churches, but that there be one church. But also the same holds true that within the church itself, we are called to have unity. We can see in today's day and age, there is the tendency to want to fracture the church into different factions. Those who want to maybe be overly critical of the Pope, or those who maybe want to misinterpret the Pope and take his teaching in the wrong direction. The need for that unity, which is something that Jesus himself prayed for before his passion. He said, Father, that they may be one, as you are one, and as I are, you and I are one, that they may be one, so that the world may believe that you sent me. So our witness to unity, to our love for each other, to being one, can help other people to know that Jesus is truly the Christ, that Jesus is truly the Son of God. St. Paul gives us a key to how to work for unity. He says, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. So he asks us to be generous, to look for the concerns of others before, before only our own. He doesn't say we're not supposed to look at our own concerns, but he says to us clearly, be sure to take care of other people as well, to consider their needs, to consider their concerns. And he also says, do nothing out of vainglory. Vainglory is pride, where one wants to exalt oneself, as opposed to wanting the Lord to be glorified. And he gives us this beautiful hymn about Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped at. And here he literally, St. Paul literally gives us the key to understanding how we too can learn to not do anything out of selfishness or vainglory. And it's very simply put, St. Paul, when he says Jesus didn't try to grasp divinity, he didn't try to grasp what God had given to him, or what was already his, I should say, from the beginning of time. Rather, he is willing to be emptied. If we go back to Genesis, if we go back to Adam and Eve in the garden, we see that the temptation of the devil was to first plant into the hearts of Adam and Eve insecurity to say, God is holding out on you. He knows that if you eat of the fruit of this particular tree, you will be like him. Your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's. Well, they were already like God. They were already God-like. God was already blessing them. And so with this fear in their heart that God was holding out, with this doubt, with this desire to gain for themselves that was beginning to stir up in them, they grasp at that fruit. Brothers and sisters, if we are honest with ourselves, we can see there are many times where we try to grasp at things. 
where we try to get ahead for ourselves, where fear gets the best of us, insecurity gets the best of us, and the desire for us to get ahead gets the best of us. And we try to control things. Jesus, when he came among us, his message was clearly put that we are to put our faith in God. That God so loves us that he gives us Jesus, his son, to die for us, and that we receive this great love, not as something that we have to earn, not as something that we have to prove ourselves for, but as a simple gift. Just as Adam and Eve, before, before they ate of that tree, they just simply received the goodness of God. He was pouring his goodness into them. Likewise, Jesus calls us, too, to have this great trust in God. This trust. This kind of trust, brothers and sisters, can literally help us to live generously. Because we want to get ahead, we are selfish when we are afraid that there's not enough. But when we know that God is good, when we know that God blesses us, when we know that God is more than generous, we can trust. And we can put the concerns of others before ours because we will know that there will be enough. There will be enough and God will bless us. He will bless us all. Also in terms of desire for vanity or vainglory that comes from pride. When we trust that God is good, when we trust that, we rest in security. That is, we rest in that knowledge that God is indeed our Father. He indeed loves us tremendously. And then we break into joy. For joy literally begins to break into our lives. Because we are able to say, you know what? I, I don't have to receive right now. I don't have to grasp at it. I can let the Lord bless me in the way he's going to bless me. And then I can serve others, being humble. And when we see examples of that, brothers and sisters, in the scriptures, we see what happens, that those who are humble are exalted. Though they may be little, in our understanding as Catholics, they are great. Tomorrow, being the 1st of October, we begin a month particularly devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I think she is a beautiful example of one who knew how to trust, even if she didn't always understand what God was doing. When the Archangel Gabriel came to her and announced that she was going to become the mother of the Messiah, become the mother of the, of the Son of God, she had a question or two. She didn't understand how it was going to take place. But she trusted. And though it would mean that she might encounter various difficulties, she had that trust. She had that simple trust in God. And so, brothers and sisters, Today, we ask the Lord for that, that great grace, to be able to simply receive. And so I would like to invite you, if you feel comfortable, and if you don't, that's fine too, to, to simply put out your hands, kind of in, in a symbol of receiving, just a simple putting out of the hands. You just do that. And I'm going to pray. Father God, we give you thanks and praise that you do not ask us to obtain or to strive for or to produce from ourselves the very gift that you give to us of being your beloved sons and daughters, that you have given us that through Jesus 
who emptied himself and poured himself out that we might be filled with him. And Father, we just ask that you may renew that faith, renew that blessing of that simple gift of Jesus in us today in such a way that all of our fears of going without may be extinguished and our hope may be kindled and filled with your love, filled with your grace, we may be willing to pour ourselves out as well to love others. Father, we ask this not only through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but also in the name of Jesus, who is worthy of all praise, now and unto the end of the ages. Amen.